The situation on the Armenia-Azerbaijan border remains dire. Only yesterday, three Armenian servicemen were killed and one Azerbaijani soldier was wounded in the latest ceasefire violation. Two weeks ago, over 200 Armenian soldiers and 70 Azerbaijani soldiers were killed in an unprecedented attack by Azerbaijan on Armenia proper. The International Crisis Group, a well-regarded NGO based in Brussels, has published a report about Azerbaijan's major attack on September 13th and 14th. In the report, Crisis Group analysts outline four possible reasons why Azerbaijan is choosing now to escalate the situation. Russia launched its invasion of Ukraine in February, and Azerbaijan may be taking advantage of the situation, which has distracted not only Moscow, but also Washington and Paris, the other co-chairs of the OSC Minsk Group, which has mediated talks between Armenia and Azerbaijan since the 90s. Baku is using this to take strategic areas and better position itself for the eventual settlement of the conflict. Meanwhile, Azerbaijani media pundits and members of parliament are calling for more territory to come under Azerbaijani control along the border with Armenia. Some call this step defensive, while others consider it an additional form of leverage for negotiations with Armenia. Second, Azerbaijan may be in a rush. A pro-government analyst in Baku told crisis group analysts that Aliyev wants to sign a peace agreement in the next two to three months. One reason may be that he is looking ahead to Turkish elections in June 2023 and is worried that his closest ally, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, could be weakened or, as opinion polls suggest, even lose. That could undermine Ankara's strong support for Azerbaijan in ongoing talks with Armenia. The pro-Baku government analyst told the ICG that any government in Turkey will support Azerbaijan, but not all governments will protect Azerbaijan's interests, as Erdogan has done, independent of both Russia and the West. Third, many people in Yerevan attribute the escalation to the fact that Azerbaijan wants a corridor through Armenian territory to its exclave of Nakhijevan. The Russian-brokered ceasefire that ended the 2020 war called for the opening of all transport routes between Armenia and Azerbaijan, including those linking mainland Azerbaijan to Nakhijevan. According to Western diplomats familiar with the negotiations, the leaders of Armenia and Azerbaijan were close to reaching an agreement on the routes in the spring of 2020. However, hopes for a breakthrough, which diplomats considered one of the easiest solutions due to the common economic stake, apparently faded at the August summit between Pashinyan, Aliyev and the EU Council President, Charles Michel. Fourth and finally, some in Baku claim that Azerbaijan wants to pressure Armenia to return eight villages under Armenian control that lie within Azerbaijan's internationally recognized borders, which correspond to Soviet-era borderlines. Armenia, in turn, has an enclave that now lies in Azerbaijan, called Artsvashen. A local expert said that Azerbaijan will try to use the territories that it has taken since the 2020 war within Armenia proper as a bargaining chip to get back its enclaves. So what now? According to the crisis group, the most promising path forward involves all the main mediators, Russia, the EU, France and the US, finding a way to continue pulling in the same direction as they did immediately after the attack from two weeks ago. Sustained focus by the international players could curtail further violence, and the Kremlin and the Western actors should set aside their tensions over Ukraine and avoid actions that will antagonize each other. The interests of Russia and the West largely overlap here. Russia does not want any escalation that would require its response, and the West does not want any escalation that would lead Russia to further beef up its military footprint in the region, which has already increased dramatically since 2020.